Why did I, a small town teenager from Quebec, Canada, travel four days by plane and ship to the windiest, driest, coldest, and most isolated continent on the planet? Quite simply, I wanted to fall in love. All my life, I've heard statistics. For example, that the average global temperature has increased 0.75 degrees Celsius in the last 50 years. When faced with images of flooded coastal cities, deforestation, and endangered animals, I wanted to care and I wanted to act, but I couldn't because the benefits of driving instead of biking and shopping with friends in the city instead of hiking alone in a forest take closer to home than the consequences. One other reason I wanted to come to Antarctica was to find tangible proof of climate change that I could share with my community. As to be expected, ice flows did not uh, shrink before my eyes. No penguin appeared without, to be without food or a habitat, and the sea level did not rise noticeably. What I gained instead was an appreciation of natural beauty and a desire to protect my home at all costs. In 1959, the world witnessed an extraordinary occurrence. Twelve nations put aside their claims on Antarctic territory and signed the Antarctic Treaty, one of the most successful international agreements. Extended in 1991 to include the protocol on the environment, the treaty devotes Antarctica to peaceful scientific use. It is illegal to establish military bases, dispose of radioactive waste, mine commercially, hunt, and fish without permission. Today, 128 countries have ratified the treaty. Unfortunately, my country, Canada, though a signatory, does not have a research station in Antarctica and is only a part member, meaning they do not have a say in certain consultative meetings. This concerns me. What also concerns me is the treaty's moratorium, which is set to expire in 2041. I spoke with author Willie Carlson and scientist David Fletcher, um, polar experts who have visited Antarctica over 100 times each. I asked them if they thought the treaty would continue beyond 2041. They smiled and I could see a cascade of images of Adelie penguins porpoising and ice capturing the sun's radiant energy, of mountain peaks blending into the white of the clouds and humpback whales gliding through perfectly reflective water. In answer to my question, Willie and David said the same three words. I hope so. Realistically, will countries thirsty because of climate change turn to Antarctica, the source of 70% of the world's fresh water? Will states in economic turmoil try to find precious metals and minerals underground? Will we, as the next generation, endanger the fish that give life to so much of the Antarctic ecosystem? We really do not know. In 2041, I will be 46 years old, and all I ask is that you join me and the other students and staff on the 2011 Students on Ice Antarctic Expedition by falling in love with our planet. Don't protect it because of charts you don't understand that show the correlation between carbon dioxide emissions and temperature increases. Don't protect it because uh, you feel guilty after watching Al Gore's Inconvenient Truth. Come to Antarctica. Sit down beside a gentoo penguin rookery. Watch the mothers feed, um, reprimand, and play with their chicks. Realize how much humans have in common with the peng uh, with the birds struggling for survival amid the skuas and leopard seals. Climb to the top of a mountain, to that magical spot where weather carved icebergs and endless ice sheets surround you in every direction. Feel your heart absorb the paradise in your midst, this veritable heaven on earth. Where, uh, they say falling in love is a choice. And to a certain extent, that is true. It's a choice to calm the butterflies in your stomach and accept an invitation to your first date. Conversely, the actual falling in love process is innate, indescribable, and almost inadvertent. 
even if you don't have the privilege of visiting the Antarctic Peninsula and experiencing its age-old wisdom for yourself, try to go outside in your backyard and listen to the chirping of birds, the footsteps of squirrels, and the falling of snowflakes, each exquisitely and individually designed. And you will find yourself transformed as I have been, miraculously, automatically, and effortlessly. A time will come when we must decide whether the international community is willing to once more preserve one wilderness area in pristine condition for our children and grandchildren. Call me an idealist, but I believe that love, if it's true enough, has the power to endure forever. It's with this love that we strengthen relationships and prevent wars. It's with this love that we pool our resources to obtain the most accurate scientific data. And it's with this love that seven continents, 192 countries, and seven billion people might work together to keep the treaty effective, Antarctica safe, and our planet alive. Thank you.